pass from Havili was magic. The shift on for Crotty. Boom, far down you go, Quackett Smith. Me, oh my, I haven't enjoyed that. Yes, boy. Sit back, relax, put your belt on, and enjoy the show. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Draft Rugby Show, where we discuss <laughs> fantasy rugby, the game they play online in heaven. Of course, tonight we are not discussing fantasy rugby. The game was very good. Um, it was perhaps a little bit of a fantasy lived out that the Wallabies did get the win. How good. Wallabies win to start the year in the test season. I'm joined here by my co-hosts, Harry and Nelson. Lads, just how good was it to watch the Wallabies running out and also to get the win? Nelson, how are you, mate, and how was it? Hey, look, I um, it was a, it was a frustrating and emotional game. I think on, on first watch and, and going through it because we just bought into that hype going into the game. Forgot that it was their first test in a long time with with a few rookies around and, and you know rookie combination nine, ten, twelve, thirteen. But we found a way to win, and I think that was important. And and because of that, over the last few days, I've got you know happier and happier with what that outcome was. Excellent, mate. That's uh, look. You're not saying it's not a cycle that happens every year that we uh, perhaps build up our wallabies before the first game every year. About um, yeah, pretty, I'd say every week, every week, every week. Sure. <laughs> Harry, how about you, mate? How did you feel? I think you nailed it, mate. How good was it to see the wallabies run out mm. and to see the wallabies win? That was about how I felt. The two highlights of the entire match were <laughs> very, very excited in the lead up and very excited when we won. Uh, my wife lost interest at about the 70th minute just when I thought we were coming good. And I, I thought it was a cracking finish to the game. I thought we were a bit lucky, to be honest, but cracking finish to the game. Uh, we'll, we'll delve into the middle stuff, I guess, as we're in the middle of the game as well. Okay. Uh, Speaking of that, I was say, you? Though, before you get into that, mate, the three words that are the summary is just never in doubt, right? That's, you know, there was, oh, no, yeah, point, for sure. there was no point we're ever losing that game. I, I did feel, to be fair, I did feel all the way through that we had a good chance of coming back and winning the game. The, the French weren't doing too much that was really threatening us after that first 20 minutes. It was just a matter of us kind of, I guess, getting rid of some of those errors. And I, and I thought we did that pretty well as the game went on. Very good. Now, sorry, I did cut you off, mate. Um, you no had problem, some, mate. some great words for it. Well, look, uh, Harry was saying it was it was a little bit lucky or felt a little bit lucky. And, and there's been plenty of people around saying that it was a fluke. So in the words of uh, the officer's Kevin Malone, he said, a fluke is one of the most common fish in the sea. So if you go fishing for a fluke, chances are you might just catch one. And I think that summed us up, right? You know, we, we worked hard. We put ourselves in the position to get that fluke at the back end of that game. So for me, I'll take that fluke any day over, you know, having lots of errors and, and showing no heart. I think we, we got the win with a lot of heart in the end. Absolutely. Look, it could just be the green and gold glasses on, but uh, it kind of feels like Maybe it's only because we can only rem- we always feel much stronger. And we remember all the times we're on the other end of those uh, the end end of those games where the game gets snatched away from us in the you know five <clears> minutes. So it did feel really good to get one in the bank. Uh, it was very it was our just our time for it. You know, it was it was very Queensland esque. You know, the Reds esque. But I put up on um, Twitter saying something along the lines of. You know, last year we would have found a way to lose that game and the instant reply was, no, we would have drawn it. And I think that, that's pretty <laughs> true. Classic, yes. Of course, three draws last year. Uh, yeah. was a was an interesting one. Um, all right, well, look, before we jump into the game, uh, the final score, 23-21. to 21, That penalty goal, uh, very difficult penalty goal from right in front um, at the end there. Our tips for the game. Uh, I went first on the tips last week and I said that it was going to be a high-scoring, high-flying affair. Two young, very skillful teams. I said 35 to 21. The Wallabies win and win by 14 points. Um, you got the French, right? Yeah. True. That's, look, you guys have find a way to, to find a positive in everything. Just like <laughs> Nelson finding that quote, mate, you can make any argument about anything. Nelson <laughs> can find a quote or a point of view from someone to uh, counteract that. But... Yeah, exactly. So, look, a little bit less points from the Wallabies, but had they cut out the mistakes, I'm sure they would have been up at 35-21. I got a bang on. So it's really just you know a little bit of skill execution, and I nailed that. So um, wrong. Yep, 14 points. Well done. So I believe you're the furthest away, Nelson. <laughs> that you go with. The guy said 23-33, and one of the teams got 23 points. So I'll take that little win there. And uh, yeah, a little bit better than Kagi. I said it was it was going to be a 10 point difference. Right, and I went eight points, so I'll I'll go closest. I'll claim the victory, thirty-two to twenty-four. You, you went over. 
No, it's, it's, it's closest it's without going over. You went over, so we all lost. I think we're all delusional <laughs> about how good the attack would, would be from both sides. It was uh, it, it left a lot to be desired, whereas the defence was, you know, except for patches, I thought was actually a lot better than I expected as well, having said that. That's true. And it was the first test for the Wallabies. Uh, yes, there's a lot of talk about, you know, the French having played the Six Nations and whatnot. But look, I mean, there's a lot of young, new French players. So it was kind of a really a fielding out game for both teams. Um, and yeah, I think it was just incredibly important for the Wallabies to win their, the first test of the year. Yeah. Uh, and look, I think I think you guys had a lot to, of chat about the uh, the viewing numbers, uh, and it was really promising. Just a lot of people tuning in. Whether that has to do with lockdown, whether that has to do with the new product on stand, because <clears throat> uh, of course this game on, I mean, it was it's been free to wear Wallabies games before uh, in the last few years, but uh, it was pretty good viewing numbers, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and I would say whenever the viewing numbers are really good, the Wallabies don't play very well. So I, I, it would actually be better if this week not many people tuned in. We can solidify the win and we can all come back for the third game, third test. Agreed. All right, well, how about we get into the talking points um, from this game? So just to, for the entree tonight, I should say. Uh, I guess, yeah, we're not going to go through the game play by play, but, I mean, really for mine, it was that start that Wallabies kind of just very nervous, error-ridden start um, that saw the French push out to 15-0 about 20 minutes in, and you kind of had this these feelings of, oh, no, here we go. Um, yeah, I mean, look, the first try, I think everyone has forgotten about um, some absolutely amazing skills on display by the French there. Absolute flair, a lot of fast moving, a lot of offloads, um, it was really, really well played by them. Um, yeah, look, oh, that, that first try, it was off the back of a, a scrum from us, a scrum win in our own 22, and uh, it came off the boot of Harry Wilson, and they scooped it up. And, I mean, we, we touched on it, you know, for the preview of last game, their captain, um, Anthony Jalonche, he loves to throw an offload, and he took it into contact, threw that offload around the corner, and that's what created that space. Tom Wright uh, had a bit of a misread, thought he had to shoot in. Obviously, there was a lot of pressure there, so he shot in and he created that space out wide. For sure. Um, and, Harry, what about that second try? Um, what do you think of that? Yeah, I mean, the less said about it, the better from the Australian defence point of view. Jake Gordon just completely misreading who, was gonna, who he had to hit and just left the short ball as a gaping hole as he chased his opposition nine. I think it was it was very smart work from the French, I would say, and they identified <coughs> Gordon just been a little bit too keen, uh, made a pretty big error. And then and I was very confused after that. There was no chase from Tom Banks. He wasn't anywhere behind mm. the line at all. I think he must have pushed up into the line or something, but they were a long way out. So I, I thought he was a little bit too wide on the open side as well, but... Um, not a yeah. not a good look. Yeah. You're um, I think you're also leaving out. And on that second take, I was wondering where Hooper was with Jake Gordon pushing so far across, and Hooper was held into that scrum, was not allowed to break away. So if that did go up, I think that definitely would have been um, called a, a penalty, and it would have been a Wallabies penalty. But um, Dylan Creden, um, Creden holding him in, being an absolute pest, being a Creden mate. That's that's in, in his name. Creton actually. I hadn't thought of this till just then when you um, mentioned that. But one thing that I saw that I really liked was a bit of those, uh, bit of those dark arts, that gamesmanship that uh, we've always said the All Blacks have been fantastic at over the years. That, as you said, the holding a player in and things like that. And one thing I did notice uh, throughout the game was the Wallabies, particularly the props and the tight five, uh, being commissioned with holding players in the in the ruck in the breakdown, particularly when uh, the French would pack all the players in, do the caterpillar so that the halfback could kick. You'd see a prop or someone get in there, grab as many players as they could and, and then just hold them for as long as they could after the kick. And I saw it yeah. time and time again. I thought it was uh, it was interesting, but um, good to see yeah, the looks, championship. Definitely lots of dark arts. But I think the one thing that I, I saw that highlighted the intent from the, the French side was, um, you know, their, their defensive coach is one of the most sought after the defensive coaches in the world, Sean Edwards. His ideology is basically shoot up with line speed and don't let the ball get to the outside backs. Basically saying whenever he watched John Loma, he goes, just don't let the boat, like, get the ball. Shoot up with the guys inside him because he's going to score when he touches it. And this is the, you know, the ideology that France took into this game, I think. And there was a lot of line speed 
questionable at times, but they, they got away with it, pushing those boundaries, which is something that a good side can do. But I I mean, for me, that, that final line at Harry, you want to take us through that? That was the highlight of that match for me. Yeah, I mean, you, you jumped across there. The um, the line speed was really good, and I think early on they got pinged a lot for it. You know, they said they got away with it. I don't think they did. I think they got penalised very heavily early in the game and then maybe got away with a little bit more later. Um, for the line out, I think, you know, Nelson, you said fishing for, for a fluke, wasn't it? Darcy Swain, Taniela Tupo, and Tate McDermott, that's exactly what they were doing. Swain pressured the line out, did very well to just kind of scramble the ball from the top. Taniela Tupu just chasing hard through the line to put pressure on the man trying to receive the ball to the point where he didn't feel like he could just kick it backwards. It was it was two it was two players that got horrified from him. The the reserve halfback, yeah. um, Irabaran or, or whatever his name is, and then Yamane, the the fullback, both freaked out and just threw the ball away in fear. Ridiculous. And then I don't know what Tate McDermott was doing, but he was only there for the absolute scramble and hope, really. How he thought that that was a possibility was amazing. And I could not believe our luck when that came to an absolute highlight for the Wallabies. And don't get me wrong, the French shit the bed, if my French is correct. I think that's the phrase. And uh, and but I I, I got to say props to the the three Wallaby subs. I thought they were excellent to make. Let's that. let's not leave out as well um, Angus Bell and Nos Lonigan. They they both shot out of that line out as well. I think uh, I think um, Bell was actually lifting and Nos was obviously throwing that line out. And when McDermott was left by himself there after shooting up like he did, they both were the first two to get there. A prop and a hooker, first two to get there to blow over that, which is pretty impressive for me. Yeah, no, it was it was a French line out. So the other just to, awesome. yeah, no. So yeah, they, so uh, both still lifting. I know, yeah, but Nos wasn't throwing it. But they, um, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, the bomb squad. We talked about him before the game. Uh, how good? But I think Harry, you nailed that. The urgency. Uh, why was you know Tate? The, it was like the game was lost, and in years gone past, he he doesn't run forward, push forward to try to get that ball. You know, it's like oh, they've knocked the line out. They've got the ball back. Game's over. But no, Tupo really getting in there and Tate coming through to get that. That was, I mean, that's what you want to see. That's test match footy there. And you should be playing with absolute urgency for every play until the game is finished. So I absolutely love that. And yeah, like we said, it was one of those times where we got the chocolates at the end of the day. So, um, and, and even I guess past that managed to stay composed enough to keep the ball and keep hammering away at the line, even if it was a little, kind of one dimensional, the just pick and drive from side to side, not even going a man out or anything, but maybe that was what was called for because we couldn't afford to drop a ball, couldn't afford to push a pass. So um, that was pretty good. Um, Before we move on, should we move on to, oh, actually, I guess one thing you guys would would be remiss if we didn't talk about the penalty count. So um, I think Harry was talking about the French getting pinged a lot early. Uh, The penalty count at, at the end of the game was six to the Wallabies, 14 to the French. And um, I think, look, I don't know. We'll have to ask the listeners, do we just have our green and gold glasses on or uh, where was the cheese, mate? Uh, they were warned many times. Boys, how do you feel about that? They, they were warned. I, I was saying they should have been warned two, two penalties before they were warned. There was three or four in a row. Then eventually they got a warning and we scored a try off it. Then within 30 seconds, they got a penalty. And with a minute and a half after that, they got a penalty again. So making it, you know, six or seven in a row in the last like five minutes. And then it was half time. And basically straight off the kickoff, they ended up getting penalized again. And it was all forgotten about. So there was like seven, eight penalties within a very, very short period of time, all in a row without, you know, a card being seen. I thought that was ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, look, we say time and time again, what, what's the, so many teams, you look at the Crusaders, the All Blacks, so many good sides give away penalties on their own line because they know they can get away with it. What, how, you can't possibly play like that as a referee, let the game flow like that. If you're going to try and ping someone and then not actually send someone off, you're just killing the game. Yeah, so great. The, the fact that it, the, the only thing I can think of is he's interpreted it as the try was scored, therefore we're not in the red zone and there's no such thing as cumulative penalties anymore. But you were warned for cumulative penalties. How, how can you possibly make that call? It just, it just didn't make any sense to me. And it was probably my biggest frustration with the refereeing. There are a couple of close calls that I feel like went against us, but when you go back and try and look at it objectively, I thought it was pretty pretty close and it was hard to complain. But that one I was pulling was my hair out. I, I was almost looking like Nelson at the end of that call. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that was it. That was the one thing for me that really frustrated me in the, in the refereeing of the game, to be fair. Other things were 50-50 and, and did go against us, but yeah, that was the one main thing. It's like, um, yeah, I mean, I think the fact that you can give away so many penalties just before halftime and just count that it's going to be reset and it's, it doesn't matter about after the half, it's a little bit crazy. It's There's a few little, you know, things like that. Like, for example, when you, you've got a, a scrum and you're trying to drive over a try, it's almost worth now, you know, deliberately knocking it on or whatever, not scoring the try off the back so that you get a penalty try awarded and they get a player carded. You know, these little parts yeah, of the it's, game, it's, you know... It's definitely it's it's a it's a funny one, but it's something that needs to be fixed. Fixed. Let's let's jump across, Kagi. Uh, do do we want to start with you, mate? Who was your man of the match, and who was the best from the French side? That sounds good. Um, well, not my man of the match. I think we were just doing man of the Aussie, like player of the Aussie team and player of the hey, French team. Australia won. We give them man of the match, and then you go man of the French team. All right, well, mine's very simple. Uh, you stole my player, so I stole Harry's. Uh, Michael Hooper, <laughs> captain of Australia, heart and soul, the first man ever to score a try with his ass. Um, <laughs> just the, was he his, his own shepherd? I'm sure he was his own shepherd. Look, he, I, yeah, you can't. I still don't know how I feel about it. It, it doesn't uh, – I don't think it bodes well, and I think, you know, upon review, perhaps – Maybe that shouldn't have been a try, but um, look, he's changing the game in 2021. New ways to score, back it up, twerk it in there, do what you got to do. Uh, it was unique. Innovation. It was, it was definitely unique. I, I'm not sure if it was illegal. People were saying he was part of the ruck. I think he was actually fine with his feet behind the, the ball when he put his hands on the ball, but very strange. I, d- I don't think it's going to catch on. Yeah, I think I don't know if the rule is like one foot has to be behind the ball and the other one. Uh, can be when you pick it up. I don't know. But anyway, got the job done and that was a very important try. So for mine, Hoops, look, played the whole game out there. Um, it was interesting him talking before the match just about how he'd come back from Japan and had to really put some weight on, um, was <laughs> was feeling the contact and training. And um, look, I mean, he looked good. He looked, he picked up right where he left off for mine. So definitely best Australian player. And of the French team, my player of the match for them was uh, Jonathan Dante, uh, the inside centre. He was fantastic, I thought. Um, he, I think he made something like, oh, I actually even wrote it down, 13 of 15 tackles. Uh, three, he only made three runs of 14 metres, but of those three runs, two tackle busts and an offload and two try assists. So every run he made absolutely counted. Um, the one that I couldn't seem to find was just how many turnover penalties he got because he's kind of like a built like a, you know, a front rower. It's kind of like a basta row. He just got over the ball. He definitely got at least two. I don't know if he got three turnover penalties um, by just jumping straight over the ball uh, when someone got isolated. So he was fantastic for mine and someone we're going to have to look out for. Yeah, he was, he was good. Um, for me, look, my man of the match was an Aussie, so I'll say man of the match, not man of the Australian team. Taniela Tupo, I just think his impact off the bench, he did his role to perfection. I, I do, do think Cooper was very good. I think Taniela Tupo just did his role perfectly. He was always coming off the bench, always supposed to add a bit of impact, not only at the scrum, which we really got a sentency when he came on, but he split the line, created a line, line break, had three tackle busts. I think he was just a really, really pivotal player in this one. Only given, you know, those 30 minutes or so. So there wasn't much more he could do, I think, on that field. So he, he was my man of the match. And the best that, friend. I, I, sorry. That's exactly what we said, didn't we, in our preview last week? We said the bomb squad coming on. I don't think the French are going to be able to handle that in the set piece. And just that impact he's going to provide. And man, did he provide that. It was the first, I think the first thing he did when he came on was that scrum. He dismantled them. It was awesome. Yeah, it was it was brilliant. I love to see it. The the best Frenchie for me was Anthony Gelonche. He had 18 tackles, 12 ca- carries, four tackle busts, a couple offloads, including that one that's, you know, really was pivotal in that lead up to that first try. He was very, very good for mine, and I think he's going to be pivotal from that for them again this week from that number eight jersey. Yeah, ph- phenomenal. And look, I to be honest with you, I I think that you guys are both right as well. Hooper and Jalanch for me were the best two players in the park by a significant margin. Um, but look, I'll Captain's give a Knox. shout out to in the uh, in honor of the fact that we always go individuals. Shout out to Brandon Pangramosa. I thought, with the exception of maybe one of his one or two of his late lineouts, where his lineout throwing started to go a little bit awry, I thought he was very, very good. 
Uh, one of the best games we've seen from him in a while. And also Dylan Cretton as well. I thought he was awesome over the ball and really physical. So I thought he was excellent as well. So they're probably my oh, mind. A, a funny thing about um, Brennan Bangamosa is probably less ball in hand, wider and, you know, in, in space and sort of running hard as he normally was. He only ran three three carries with zero metres gained. But I, I agree. I think it was a, a pretty good game for him. He was pretty physical, you know, involved in the breakdown, decent in the line out, made seven from seven line outs as well. So I, I think it was a pretty good game from him. He did not make seven from seven line I mean, outs. So that's a seven, seven tackles, seven from seven tackles. Right, okay, cool. Go and of course, um, just before, before we move on, I was going to say, we've got um, some of the stats up on the screen. If you're joining us on YouTube, of course, you can get after us wherever you get your podcasts or uh, at Giraffe Rugby on YouTube. And please get in there, give us a follow, likes or whatever all those things are. Um, but, yeah, uh, Harry, what, were you going to say something about the French? Well, the huge one here, look, possession 64% to 66% to the Wallabies, 75% territory. We absolutely dominated that in both halves. So that was pretty huge. And I think on territory, there was a stat that came out after the game. The French didn't actually make it into the Wallabies 22 after the 20 minute mark. So the, the Wallabies definitely played far, far better as the game went on and really controlled the territory of the game. And the other stat for me was the Wallabies defense, 70% tackle completion, 42 from 70 tackles. That was a big worry for me and something that we knew was an issue going, coming out of Super Rugby Aotearoa and something that they said they worked on very, very hard in training. There's definitely some issues there that they still need to fix. Mm. Definitely. Um, an interesting thing for me since that first test, the French coach, Galfi, uh, has come out and oh, said, yeah. Yeah, said, Galfi's fine. Um, I just don't I mean, like it. You, you guys get all the uh, Pacific Islander names but, uh, and the Argentinian names. We're getting all those. I think I'm getting the French names correct. But anyway. We'll, we'll give, give it to you this time. I give it Doug a bone. But look, he said, let's not, let's, let's not forget that our starting vision for this tour was to discover talent, which I feel is a cop out. They couldn't, you know, take those first, you know, the teams or players that decided not to come. They were playing the final. We're only going to be available maybe for this third test. This was them trying to bring a team that they wanted to still be able to succeed. You do not want to lose games. You're not just trying to discover talent. I mean, it's, it's a weakened team, but I find that a cop-out of a quote. No coach, uh, I would never be happy with an Aussie coach coming out and saying that. Oh, mate, if you're, if you're the French or the English coach, uh, you feel like your job is on the line every game and there's never an excuse for losing. There's no the, the, for building. Uh, the French public do not buy into that. Yeah, not at all, mate. He's, he's got the, the biggest professional base in any country in the world and in rugby. Plus he has an under 20 side that was dominant for a few years who he's brought into this team. They were not just trying to discover talent. Sure. They were giving guys chances, but I, I feel that's a cop out for mine. Yeah. Look to, to round up the entree. I think what you're saying is he's setting them up to fade away French. Yes. Life. So yeah. fantastic. <clears throat> we're going to get with that smooth transition to the main course. 